Alyssa Wong and Minku Jung crash the party as Afra and Sana infiltrate Crimson Dawn's big event, intent on getting information about Crimson Dawn and all of the big players there for Domina Tag. But the Empire and a certain Dark Lord's appearance throws a Hydro Spanner into Afra's plans. Alyssa Wong manages to do something here which many multi-part book events completely get wrong and that's match up with what's happening in her book with another book out this week, that being War of the Bounty Hunters issue 2, and do so quite flawlessly. I thoroughly enjoyed seeing the same set of events from different perspectives across these two books with Alyssa naturally focusing on Aphra and Sana and Lucky and Ariel, continuing her own plots with these characters really well in fun different ways that gives us a good look at the who who's who of the event. I thoroughly enjoyed the ending with Vader making a surprise appearance and Aphra getting all serious for a moment there thanks to her PTSD suffered at the hands of him. And hopefully over the course of this event or maybe even after it, Aphra gets a chance to kind of unpack all of that for once and deal with it head on. Minku Jung continues their fantastic artwork that, like the writing, is a perfect match for War of the Bounty Hunters issue 2, design-wise, featuring a great stable of aliens and interesting character designs. I love Jung's visual representation of Aphra's panic and PTSD in the final pages as well, and how it matches up with the Darth Vader book's take on anger and pain, just covering everything in sort of this veil of red uh, to sort of symbolize like anger and pain and suffering, and I think that's quite awesome. Dr. A for issue 12 was a really fun inclusion to the War of the Bounty Hunters storyline, achieving something seldom seen in big events to give us an issue that is a flawless expansion on the main storyline of the event, while also continuing its own storylines in interesting ways. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Dr. Aphra issue 12 finds Sana and Aphra infiltrate the Vermilion, Crimson Dawn's flagship, noting how everyone from Jabba the Hutt, Black Sun, Vakura, and even more are there, making it a who's who of the underworld power players. Sana asks Aphra how many of them want to kill her, and Aphra knows all of them do. As they grab a drink at the bar, Sana says that Aphra should have been a pod racer, since they have no sense of self-preservation. Aphra reminds her that if she doesn't bring Domina the intel on Crimson Dawn and everyone there, she will take her head, and it would be nice for one fewer person in the galaxy who wants to take her head, especially if it's a targ. She can't believe Crimson Dawn is back and neither can the arriving Empire as Aphra notices Sly Moore, knowing her to be the Emperor's administrator, really hoping Darth Vader isn't far behind. Sana says no one is paying attention to them anyway and they are all distracted by the solo auction. Aphra soon spots a Black Sun representative wearing a very expensive necklace, becoming distracted by it. The woman talks with Kray as Aphra comes by, spilling her drink on the Fallen and attaching something to the necklace. She pretends to be sorry but the the woman pushes her off, demanding Aphra not touch her. The woman recognises Aphra, knowing the robes that they wear to signify that they are part of Evan Drake's crew, wanting the woman to tell Drake his people have just slighted Zet of the Black Sun and only by her mercy are they spared. Sana thinks that she seems like a joy to be around as Aphra knows that that was close but the necklace was a slice's dream since each of the data crystals embedded in it is the perfect way to smuggle information, especially if they are trading secrets at a party like she was. Was. She knows that she didn't get the necklace, but she gave the woman something in return as she activates the bug she put in the necklace. Elsewhere at the party, Just Lucky and Ariel arrive, spotting Cray in the party. Ariel knows it's too risky to take out the trader there, wanting to wait until the auction starts to get him alone. Lucky notes how the man has gotten old, but Ariel says that he's a seasoned killer and they will take any advantage they can get on him. Sana Mimol finds it amazing no one has killed each other yet, and between her and Aphra, they have double-crossed probably everyone in the room, and it's only a matter of time before it all explodes. Aphra knows that everyone has double-crossed everyone, which is what makes it interesting as she activates the bug she put on the Black Sun representative's necklace, finding that she has gone to the bathroom to clean her gown, proclaiming that she will murder Eben next time she sees him. Sana wants to go and take her down, but Aphra tells her to relax and act cool since no one there knows who they are. A hooded man suddenly grabs Aphra's arm, saying that he knows her name is Shelly Aphra, knowing her to be a thief, and while they don't know who Sana is, she needs to take her hand off her blaster since this isn't the sort of place they want to start shooting. 
Sana demands the being let go of Aphra, so they do, as the woman says that she may be a thief, but she's a noted archaeologist as well, and she knows her history, like how she recognises his voice from the Battle of Coruscant Holovids, knowing the man to be one of the clone soldiers. The man says he's not a clone soldier, but he's someone else, and someone she wants on her side. The man says that if the women help him, he won't go and tell Crimson Dawn's guards the notorious thief Shelly Aphra is there scoping out the place, which will lead to everyone tearing her apart. Aphra wonders what he wants, so the man says a diversion, giving Aphra a comm button that he will activate it, and when it is activated, she'll know to distract the guards. Kira soon takes the sage, welcoming everyone to the party, knowing that many had dealings with Crimson Dawn in the past, but now they are back, and they want the people to know who they are and what they can offer them, showing that Crimson Dawn has achieved what no one else could, presenting the Carbonite Frozen Han Solo, wanting to start the bidding at 100,000 credits. Kray leaves the room, so Ariel and Lucky follow, finding the man is expecting his protégés, knowing it's been a while since he's seen them. He attacks with his staff, knowing that they were coming for him since after all, he trained them. Craig can see that Lucky has grown, but Ariel not so much as the boy comes for his old master. Lucky knows that he's just baiting Ariel, and the man knows it's working. Cray knows they won't believe him, but he actually wants to talk with them, and the boys say they don't believe him, so the old man attacks, wanting to see what they have learned. Kira Mimo fields the bids from the Empire and other organisations, as Cray tells Lucky that the problem with his sniper rifle is it's good at a distance, but very vulnerable at close range as he kicks the boy down. Jabba bids on Solo, and as do the other huts, quickly raising the bid as Cray demands the boys stay down, but Ariel refuses. Jabba soon bids 1 million credits for Han Solo, sealing the deal with Kira, who congratulates the hut that Han Solo is now his. A voice says no, however, revealed to belong to Darth Vader, who says that Captain Solo is his. Aphra says that they need to go as she begins having a panic attack, remembering how Vader choked her and forced her out an airlock. Sana snaps her out of it, as the panicked woman says if Vader sees her, she's dead. Aphra thinks that Sana is Vader grabbing at her, so she runs, falling over and the communication device that the man gave her smashes on the ground, garnering Vader's attention.